creating YouTube. I know it's considered bad form to ask people to go look at things when you're doing a video, but it's really important to this particular video that you pause this uh, this video and you go look at the uh, the accompanying link because the graphic in it is not only horrible and shocking, um, it is just uh, uh, I mean a graphic image. It is not an actual pictures or anything. It's just a, an illustration. Um, but it's very important to this video because it shows. How many people have died in 2017 in the United States as compared to Australia through gun-related deaths? And it's not covering self-harm, which is the largest category. It is just covering the deaths of people dying at the hands of another by firearms. So please, pause this, go look at the graphic, and then come back. Thank you. Alrighty, so I'm hoping that you did, in fact, go look at that because it's very important. Because that graphic is horrifying. Because even though it's just little human figures, it's little human figures stamped like the ones on the side of a plane to justify, or to, dis to, to, to display how many kills have been made. And the shooting in Las Vegas has accounted for more gun-related deaths in America than Australia had for the entire year. Then you look at the part, the, the, the graphic below that, and that shows you how many gun-related deaths there have been in the United States in 2017 so far. Not counting self-harm, which is the largest segment of gun-related deaths. If you have a firearm in your house, it is far more likely to be used against someone in your own home by either you or someone that you live with or know. That's just the reality of it. Unless they are properly stored and the ammo is kept in a separate location. But if you have firearms at hand, they're very likely going to be used against someone in your home rather than someone trying to break into your home. And that's just what it is. I know that's going to rile up the Second Amendment folks, but that's reality. I've been a defender of the Second Amendment for my entire life. And I don't want to have it abolished. But I've come to the conclusion that we need to impose some controls upon it that we currently don't have. And again, and the Second Amendment folks get all riled up. Remember, the most important amendment we have is the First Amendment. And we already have reasonable limits upon it. So all I'm asking is for some reasonable limits upon the Second Amendment. And the reasonable limit at this point in time that I would like to have placed upon the Second Amendment is semi-automatic weapons. Civilians do not need them. No shotguns, no rifles, no pistols, no weapon in between any of these things. No loopholes. If it's a semi-automatic mechanism, we do not need those firearms nor do we need any of the accessories for those firearms, nor any forms of accessory that would allow a weapon that is currently not semi-automatic to function as a semi-automatic firearm. Now, I heard some pundit recently talking about using AR-15s for, for a home defense. Against what? Do the homosexuals honestly think that they're preparing for a war against the United States government. Because let's look at it this way. If there is ever a coup in the United States, and the, and the coup happens to align with the politics of the homosexuals, all of their guns are useless because they won't be needed. If you've got the military back behind you, you're going to win. And if the coup in, 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 in that this theoretical post-apocalyptic universe that they're fantasizing about if the military is not behind their personal political slant, and the homosexuals have to go up against the U.S. military, do they really think that they're going to be able to play out the film Red Dawn? Do they, do they really believe that? Because guess what? They will be squashed like a bug. The U.S. military is the largest military on the planet, by far. We are larger than like the top 10 other militaries in the world combined. So your little AR-15 is going to do you shit 
against the U.S. military. But what it does do is allow your average citizen the ability to kill a whole lot of other citizens. One man, one man killed 58 people and wounded 500. Now, I actually heard a pundit from the NRA going off about the fact that well, we're going to ban knives and feet when a single angry white man can kill 58 and wound 500 at a range of 1,200 feet with knives and, or feet. <clears throat> I will support banning those things. But he didn't use knives or feet. He didn't use a truck. He didn't blow anything up. He stood in a window with semi-automatic firearms, rifles in Pacific, modified with bump stocks, and killed 58 people and wounded 500. We need to do something about that. He should never have been able, allowed to own that many firearms in that short a time span. But of course, thanks to the NRE, those things weren't noticed. Now, every time this comes, these shootings come up, the NRA and the, and the GOP starts talking about mental health. The only time they ever talk about mental health, because they're not putting the money into mental health. They're not making sure that Americans have single-payer universal health care, which would make sure that every American had access to whatever mental health services they needed. They only bring up mental health when there is a shooting to dissuade us and to sidetrack the fact that we have too many friggin' firearms in America that are made for war. Because that is what semi-automatic firearms are designed for. War. And when you put items into people's hands that are made to go to war, they will go to war. And we need to get these firearms out of people's hands. We need to ban the sale, manufacture, import, export, and all accessories of semi-automatic firearms in America. Completely. And I'm not talking about confiscation at this point, because I didn't think it would work. But what we can do is every single time someone commits a crime with a semi-automatic firearm, we double the penalty. We drive people off the market of using firearms like this in crimes. Obviously, it's not going to stop people like the guy in Las Vegas, because he went, went into that room with the knowledge that he was going to kill a lot of people and then himself. But we can make sure that, that background checks are done. We can make sure that things are properly registered. We can make sure that there's a national database of all firearm data, a national database of all shootings, both civilian and police. We can start gathering information so we have more knowledge about what we need to do about this problem. But the NRE has stopped us at every step. And the supporters of the NRA, who are taking NRA money as fast as they can, are helping helping the shooters like the one in Las Vegas. And do you know what happened after the, one in the shooting in Las Vegas when it was revealed that bump stocks were one of the reasons he was able to shoot and kill and, and, and injure and maim so many people? Do you know what happened? They started flying off the shelves. A device was used to murder, massacre Americans on American soil. And the first thing the ammo sexuals did was start buying more of that piece of technology. Fuck you, you NRA dick suckers. I am sick of you. You make me ill. You are morally bankrupt. Every fucking one of you. Americans are being killed because gun enthusiasts like the ability to fire a whole lot of rounds all at once. Go watch some videos about chain guns if you need it. But we don't need these types of weapons in the hands of civilians. People could still hunt. People could still plink. People could still have home defense with pump-action rifles and shotguns, and with revolvers, muskets, muzzle loaders, lever actions. There's all kinds of things that we could use for hunting and self-defense and planking for fun. We don't need 
weapons of war. Because when we have them, people go to war. 